In a previous tutorial, I covered the basics of DCS Flight Panels and how it is used as a keyboard emulator. In this tutorial, I will review how DCS Flight Panels works in conjunction with DCS BIOS. As described on its GitHub project page, quote, DCS BIOS is a community-maintained export.lua file for use with DCS World. It provides a stable, documented interface for external hardware and software to interact with the clickable cockpit of DCS World aircraft. Close quote. Shortly after Jerker Dahlblom began developing DCS flight panels, but going down a different programming path, he realized that DCS BIOS aircraft profiles could be used in his program as well. The combination of DCS flight panels and DCS BIOS gives the user a great deal of flexibility in configuring Logitech Pro flight panels. DCS BIOS profiles are specific to individual DCS World aircraft modules, but sadly, not all modules have an associated DCS BIOS profile. Development of these profiles is dependent upon community support as they do not come from Eagle Dynamics or third-party module developers. When you open DCS Flight Panels and start a new configuration, you will see a list of supported modules in the drop-down list. For this demonstration, I'll select the A10C. Initially, nothing looks different as compared to keyboard emulation mode. However, when you right-click to configure a switch, you will see a new selection, Edit DCS BIOS Control. After selecting that, a configuration dialog box opens. In the upper right, you can see confirmation of the switch and its position that you are configuring. Click New and the DCS BIOS Control selection box will open. At this stage, you have to find the proper control ID. Type a search word in the field on the upper right. In this case, I want to configure the switch to turn on navigation lights. I'll start with NAV for my search and see if it brings up the proper control. That didn't work, so I'll try lights. So it appears the A10C doesn't use the term navigation lights, but I now have a list to choose from, and I believe position lights is what I'm looking for. The terms on the left are the actual control names that DCS BIOS uses, and those on the right are the descriptions given to the controls by whoever worked up the DCS BIOS profile. Double-click Position Lights, and now the control function shows up in the Control ID field in the upper left. This particular function has three values or states, 0, 1, and 2, and they control whether the lights are flashing, off, or are steady. The first assumption is that flashing is 0, off is 1, and steady is 2. Unfortunately, you might have to test to be sure the correct state is used for the result you want. The input type is already set to set state, which is what we want, but fixed step is another input type that I'll review later. For now, I want to set the state to 2 for steady. I don't want to delay, so I can click OK. The mapped control is now shown, and I can type in my description, which will be position lights on. Now I'll go through the steps for position light off. Click on the field and select Edit DCS BIOS Control. Click New, search on Lights, double-click Position Lights, and enter 1 for the state. Finally, enter a description and click OK. Even though we are using DCS BIOS commands, any control can still be used as a keyboard emulator. For example, I'll enter P for pitot heat on and write control P for pitot heat off. If you select edit sequence, this still applies to keyboard commands. If you want to have a sequence of DCS BIOS commands, that is done from within the DCS BIOS configuration area. Let's go back to the nav on switch and edit the DCS BIOS commands. Click New and search on lights again. We'll turn on the formation lights along with the position lights. As it happens, the A10C formation lights aren't simply on or off. Their intensity is controlled by an in-cockpit rotary. For DCS BIOS, this means that the control values go from 0, meaning off, to 65535, or full brightness. Since I am configuring a simple on-off switch, I still want to use the set state function. 
I will enter a value of 65535 to set the formation lights to fully bright. Click OK. Now formation lights control has been added to the sequence for this switch. If desired, you can add delays so that the controls in the sequence don't occur simultaneously. I'll change the description to simply lights on and exit the dialog box. Now, there are a few things to mention before leaving the switch panel. As in keyboard emulator mode, you can still tie switch position to the BIP panel, whether it is configured with a DCS BIOS control, set up as a key emulator, or has no configuration at all. That is, the switch simply activates a BIP LED. However, since we do have a DCS BIOS profile to work with in this case, we can configure BIP LEDs directly at that panel. Finally, I'll go over how to configure the landing gear LEDs on this panel when I do the same for the backlit information panel. For now, let's jump over to the PZ70 multi-panel to demonstrate other DCS BIOS configuration options. Since I have pitch trim control on my HOTAS, I can use the pitch trim wheel on this panel for something else. I have mine set to move the heading bug on the HSI. So right click pitch trim up and select edit DCS BIOS control. Click new and search for heading. The proper choice in this case is heading select knob. The bug position of 0 to 360 degrees is represented by the control range of 0 to 65535. By definition, this particular control is variable step, so set state is not available. I want pitch control up to move the heading bug clockwise. When you rotate the wheel, control pulses are sent. By entering a value to send to DCS BIOS, I can control how far the bug will move with each pulse. With each of those pulses, the value I use gets added to whatever current state the control is in, which would be somewhere between 0 and 65535. I believe a position value of 1500 will give fine but rapid control of the heading bug in the clockwise direction. Click OK and add a description. I'll just use heading bug up. Now I'll select pitch trim down to move the heading bug counterclockwise. Right click again, select edit DCS BIOS control and click new. Search on heading and select the knob. A value of negative 1500 will cause the bug to move counterclockwise. Click OK and call this heading bug down. Other examples of this type of control would be formation lights or panel lights, which have a range of brightness control instead of just on and off, or various radio volume controls available to the pilot. Thanks to DCS BIOS, you can use the upper and lower LED displays on the multi-panel to show flight data. With the left selector knob set to ALT, left click on the upper LCD data screen. In the configuration box, do a search on ALT for altitude. The DCS BIOS profile for the A10C offers altitude above sea level as a pre-calculated value. What I mean is that in many cases only raw data is available. It all depends on what was put into the DCS BIOS profile when it was created. I'll go over how to deal with raw data in a DCS flight panels tutorial on working with formulas. For now, Double click on Altitude MSL and then click OK. The little white square that appears on the display indicates that it has been configured. As another example, I'll put heading in the lower display. Left click on the lower LCD data screen. Now search HDG for heading. Heading degrees appears to be the correct choice. Sometimes, depending on the data you want to display, you might have to try a few inputs before getting the right one. Again, it depends on how the DCS BIOS profile was set up. Click OK and notice the square dot indicating that the display has a configuration. There is one last thing to point out on the multi-panel. Both this and the radio panel have knob sensitivity settings. The default is zero and minus one or minus two will slow down the response from turning the knobs. I find that minus one works very well. When you are working on a DCS flight panels profile with a supporting DCS BIOS profile, 
The radio panel is pre-programmed for that specific module, so none of the controls or displays are configurable by the user, except for knob sensitivity as noted before, and in this case, setting a delay for frequency transfer after pressing the active standby button. Depending on your system, you might need to adjust this to get frequency changes to work better. It is worth noting that not all modules will have all radios configured or fully functional in DCS BIOS and therefore not in DCS flight panels. For example, the AJS37 Vigan allows for using the knobs to change in cockpit frequencies, but those frequencies cannot be displayed on the external radio panel. Regarding the TPM or throttle prop mixture panel, there are a few things to mention. First, DCS flight panels cannot be used to configure the push-pull sliders. I use the Logitech configuration software for that. Second, for some reason, Satec, when they designed this panel, set up the switches so that they send their on signal when in the down position and off signal in the up position. To me, this seems backwards. Nearly all of my TPM switch configurations reverse the outputs. This can get a little confusing as you work on your profile and can cause some in-cockpit surprises as controls get synced, but it seems to work out pretty well. This brings us to the BIP or Backlit Information Panel. Sadly, Logitech has elected not to offer the Backlit Information Panel or Throttle Prop Mixture Panel. I can only guess that the market did not support continued availability, which is surprising regarding the TPM in particular. Maybe they will offer either or both again in the future. The first thing to point out on the BIP is that you can cycle through the LEDs either individually or all at once. Click on a single LED and you will see the color cycle on the panel itself. Click on toggle all LEDs and the entire panel will light up. This is a nice feature and it helps remind you what text is associated with any given LED on the actual panel. Now, right-click on an LED space and then select Configure. For this LED, I want a green display when batteries are on and a dark display when they are off. Click New Green and type Battery in the search field. Double-click Battery Power to enter that DCS BIOS control. I will use Trigger Value 1 since I want green when battery is on. I'll use Equals in this case, but other choices are available. Click OK. Now I'll set the LED to dark when battery power is off. Click New Dark and again search on battery. After selecting battery power, we are done as zero is the default and again we want to use equals. Click OK and you can review your configuration in the control list. If everything looks good, click OK. The little dot indicates that this LED has a configuration. As I mentioned earlier, the landing gear LEDs on the switch panel can be configured as well. I'll set up one of those now, but keep in mind that the same process is used for configuring BIP LEDs. Go back to the PZ55 switch panel, right click on the N LED and select configure. When the gear is down and safe, I want the LED to show green. Click on new green and search using gear. Since we are configuring the N LED, choose Nose Gear Safe. When the gear is down and safe, this control sends a 1, so put that in the trigger value and click OK. When the gear is up, I want the LED to be dark, so click New Dark, search on Gear again, and choose Nose Gear Safe. Leave 0 as the trigger value and click OK. Finally, while the gear is in transition, I want the LED to be solid red or blinking red, depending on what control is available. Click New Red and search gear again. This time we want to look more carefully at the controls that are available. It turns out that the A10C has a gear handle warning light, which shows while the gear is in transition, so select that. When this control has the warning light on, a value of 1 is sent. So again, we'll put that in the trigger value field. To complete the configuration, you would do the same for the left and right main gear LEDs. This completes the tutorial on working with DCS BIOS profiles. In the next and final tutorial, I'll review working with formulas. Thank you for watching.